The prospect of weeks or maybe even months of social isolation is, well, it's pretty scary to a lot of people. But in this video, I'm going to tell you a few ways you can use your hobbies to save your sanity, keep you inspired, and get you through the tough times. Hi there, I'm Guy from Midwinter Minis, and I've been a Warhammer nerd for about 25 years. Now, if you're new to the channel, you might not really be that interested in building, painting, or playing with little models, but pretty much all of the tips in this video can apply to almost any at-home hobby. Here on Midwinter Minis, we don't mess around with boring intros, so let's just get stuck in. First off, now this may go without saying, but take this opportunity to actually start a hobby. Maybe you've been thinking about starting one for a while, or diving back into a hobby you didn't have time for in the past. Maybe you always wanted to start a little board game collection. Maybe you want to see why so many people are talking about D&D or Magic the Gathering. Now's your chance. A period of self-isolation is a great opportunity to indulge in your hobbies, keep yourself happy, occupied and sane without feeling guilty. I'm obviously leaning a bit more on the nerdy side of things with these suggestions, but there are loads of more traditional pastimes that are really fun too. Customising clothing, baking… My girlfriend's actually got really into knitting recently, she's been making cuddly toys for all the kids we know. You might not be any good at them right now, but you'll get better and have fun in the process. Spending hours and hours at a time on your hobbies may seem like a great idea at the start, but the more time you sink into it without taking care of your day-to-day -day business and boring chores, the less your hobby will be truly enjoyable. You'll also quickly find yourself surrounded by crap and mess that brings you down. Spend a few minutes in the morning planning out your day, write out your daily tasks and maybe specific household projects that you want to conquer, and then reward yourself with hobby time when you complete them. Did you put your laundry on the rack straight away and not leave it for hours until it smells weird? Nice one. Go and enjoy your hobby for half an hour. Try to set some time aside every single day to enjoy yourself, and you'll quickly develop a really positive relationship with your hobby, and you'll feel a nice sense of accomplishment. Being stuck inside is frustrating, and it's easy to feel a bit more tense at times like this. If things don't work out exactly as you want, or you don't manage to stick to your hobby plans, it's not the end of the world. Go easy on yourself. I find this especially true if I've been trying some more advanced techniques that didn't turn out as I expected. Refresh yourself by nailing some easy things that give you a big dose of satisfaction when you're done. Remember that every failure is just a learning experience, and you'll do better the next time. Also, one of the plus sides of being in isolation is hardly anyone will know you made a mistake in the first place. While there's no harm in learning a game by yourself, or taking turns being both players, if you're lucky enough to be in self-isolation with family, kids or housemates, try getting them involved too. Now, this isn't just a one-way street, don't expect your interests to instantly become theirs, but a shared hobby can be a really great bonding experience, as well as a great way of spending your free time. Just a word of advice though, don't dive in at the deep end with someone who's brand new to your hobby world. Don't push too hard, or be overly competitive. Ease people in with some nice beginner-friendly projects or games, and don't forget to get involved in their interests too. Well, if they want you to, obviously. One of the more boring downsides of the current situation is that recycling uplifts in our area have been suspended. Now, if you weren't a massive hobby nerd, you might be thinking, oh no, I'm going to have to put all this easily recyclable stuff in the landfill bin. How terrible for the environment. Well, thanks to your newfound hobby superpowers, you're not just saving lives by staying inside, you're also helping the planet out by using rubbish in your scale modelling projects. Turn polystyrene packaging into walls, cardboard boxes into buildings and panels, plastic food containers into barricades, soup cans into industrial silos, the only limit is your imagination. And, well, places to store all this cool new terrain. If you want some inspiration, check out a few of my personal favourites, like Eric's Hobby Workshop, Black Magic Craft, Dark Matter Workshop, and Wylock's Armory. Links to those channels are in the description. Now, learning a whole new game can be a bit of an intimidating challenge, especially when your busy life keeps getting in the way. One of the plus sides of self-isolation is that you might finally have time to sit down and learn the rules of a cool new game. Maybe a Kickstarter you backed, or a gift someone got you. Now's the perfect time to check it out. For me, in the future I want to make a couple of retro battle reports using the second edition Warhammer 40k rules from the 90s. That's going to be a good challenge. If you don't have the manual for the game you'd like to learn, check out videos of the game being played here on YouTube. You'll usually be able to find some how-tos, let's plays, and tutorials for most game systems. If you're lucky enough to have a space you can claim for your hobby, spend a day really organising it and streamlining how you use it. Put things you often use nearby and tidy things away that you only use from time to time. 
If you don't have a dedicated space to work on your hobby, why not use a couple of trays or boxes that you can hide things away when you're not using them? Dinner trays make great portable hobby workshops. And remember, great things can come from small beginnings. The first couple of videos in this channel were filmed on a tiny charity shop dressing table in the corner of a bedroom. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing your hobby for, it doesn't matter how efficient you are, you're guaranteed to have some sort of pile of shame. It might just be a little stack of unused bits, a few projects that you've had on the back burner, or if you're anything like me, enough box sets, sprues and spares to stock up a local gaming store. Now, if you want to see the full video of my secret shame, hit the link that just popped up. Now, confronting your pile of shame isn't just about humiliating you into action. It is about that a little bit, let's be honest, but it's also a chance for you to really decide if you actually need some of the stuff, or want it at all. You might actually be tempted to sell some of it off on eBay. I mean, you can pretend you won't buy more with the proceeds, but hey, we're taking baby steps here. Now, if you don't have a huge backlog of stuff to complete, a great way of using your downtime is by planning out projects you can pick up once things start getting back to normal. You might find that even the hobby stores that are able to ship their orders out will start running out of stock soon. So start making army lists, designing your campaigns, plan out colour schemes, and you'll know exactly what you need when this weird situation blows over. Engage your brain while doing your hobby. Listen to something while you make or paint stuff. Audiobooks and podcasts are great, but music is also amazing to help your concentration. Especially this fantastic Midwinter Minis album. Wow, isn't it beautiful? Link in the description. Finally, self-isolation doesn't have to mean loneliness. There are awesome communities out there for practically any hobby you can think of, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, or even here on YouTube. Show off your stuff, get feedback, help other people, and be part of the community. Also, if you have friends you usually hobby with, find an online game you both enjoy, and stay in the habit of having a regular game night. So, there we go. A few ideas of how not to only survive self-isolation, but thrive in it. Hopefully, you can develop great habits, stay sane, and come out the other side of this as a hobby grandmaster. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please check out some of our others, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.